If you've ever been in this place, and even if you haven't, you'll recognize it as the Mooney Aircraft Factory in Kerrville, Texas. And you recall that Mooney was bought by Chinese investors in 2013. The factory has been on this site since 1953 and has been through more changes than I can count on both hands and maybe even my toes, but none have been as far reaching as what's going on there now. Mooney has recapitalized and invested in new production machinery, including a composite line, all aimed at making its metal airplanes more efficient to build. And this is what's coming out of the Kerrville factory now, the M20U Ovation Ultra, along with a sister model, the M20V Acclaim Ultra. The origin of the M20 goes all the way back to the 1960s when Mooney first started producing combination welded tube and monocoque airframes. The new Ovation is quite an advancement from the original M20s, but before we get into those details, let's talk market. Both Mooney models live in a competitive environment, sometimes called four-place HIPSI, for high-performance single-engine aircraft. You know the competitors, the two Cirrus models, the SR-22 and SR-22T, and Cessna's TTX. Maybe the Diamond DA-40, but it's really not in the same speed class. In this group, Mooney is an outlier for two reasons. One, it has retractable landing gear, and two, until recently, it had just one cabin door on the right side of the airplane. And that's what Mooney has been up to, adding a door to the left side. And here's how they did it. You know that the forward section of the Mooney is a cage of welded steel tubing. Mooney engineers jiggered the tubes around to carry flight loads around an opening in the left side and move the tubes back to make the doors larger. The forward cabin used to be skinned in metal, but now it's a composite shell clipped to the tubing. Weight-wise, it's a wash, but it's quicker to build. Okay, so now the Mooney has two doors. What's the big deal? I flew the Ovation Ultra with Lee Drumheller from Premier Aircraft. He sells Moonies for a living. And now while we're climbing up there, we're climbing from uh, 4,000 to 8,000 to sample the speeds in the Ovation. Tell me about the uh, appeal of the pilot side door. We weren't certain when Mooney announced that, what, what it, uh, how it would be received, but apparently it's a, it's a deal maker for you. It's been a, it's been a really great addition to the airplane. Uh, from what legacy airplanes for, for about 40 years have had one, one door, uh, we've now entered into the marketplace with a pilot side door, which, you know, Sears has done, Diamond has, TBMs now have a pilot side door, and it makes getting in and out of the airplane for both the pilot and the passenger is a lot easier, and um, it just makes the, the egress and, and uh, for the airplane so much more accessible for everybody. And uh, also, I didn't realize this at the time when I looked at the factory, but the, uh, the door is also larger. It is. So it's uh, four inches further back and also an inch and a half taller. So um, getting into the back seat for your passengers is going to be a lot more easier and more comfortable um, through that bigger door. I will say this about the door. It really does make ingressing and egressing easier, even for someone as clumsy as me. Plus it's wider, so it's easier to get stuff in the back seat. That's important because airplanes in this class are frequently flown with just two people aboard, and that's a good place to talk about what the Mooney will carry. Here's how the Mooney's useful load compares to the competition. The heavyweights are the two Cirrus models and the Cessna TTX at 3,600 pounds gross weight. At 3,368 pounds, the Mooney's are 232 pounds lighter, but they're also smaller. Here's how the useful loads stack up. The Ovations is 1,050 pounds compared to about 1,310 pounds for the equivalent Cirrus. Equivalent here means neither airplane has the known ice package nor air conditioning. That saves over 100 pounds. That means with full tanks, that's 100 gallons in the Ovation, it can haul 450 pounds or two people and a bunch of baggage or three people if they're more like this and not like this. Of course, you can carry four in the Ovation if you down fuel. In that case, you can carry about 60 gallons of gas or enough for three and a half hours with a reserve. With its additional payload, the SR-22 can truly haul four people, full fuel, and some baggage. But add the de-icing package and AC, and you'll need to throw off a passenger or some fuel. Let's look at speed next. Now, when you're in a cross-country, where are you typically running this? 
probably depends on the wind, but it depends on the winds, but I'm typically between 8 and 12,000, depending on the wind. Yeah, I, I, I noticed in, in looking at the curves in the uh, performance section of the manual, 8,000 is a sweet spot for this airplane. It really is. Going above that, you gain a little, but not much. Just, yeah, you're not really gaining a lot. 8,000 is, it's, like you said, the plateau of its performance. Unless you've got some honking winds at, at right. 12, and you don't have oxygen here, so there's not much point. Right. Built-in oxygen is an, is a, is a, is a, uh, is an option. Okay, so uh, now we've settled out at uh, 4,000 feet. The low crew is something you might do it when, if you're into a strong headwind. 174 knots indicated, 184 true. Fuel flow is uh, 18.4, uh, and we're still uh, best power, Richard P. Correct. Okay, so let's bring that back Lena Peak and take a look at it. Sure. Okay, so now we're back to Lena Peak. 1,000 feet, 164 indicated, 174 true on 13.7 gallons per hour. So that's pretty economical. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. And uh, that's going to give us uh, easily six hours. Okay, so 8,000 feet is a sweet spot for the Mooney. Here's a graph showing where the ovation fits in with the other airplanes. For this comparison, the turbocharged airplanes are actually the outliers. Above 8 to 10,000 feet, they really get going. But the SR-22 and TTX are kind of doggy down low. So the interesting part of the graph is right here. It shows that the ovation is consistently 8 to 10 knots faster than the SR-22, until both airplanes get into the teens where the Cirrus closes the gap just a little. And why is that? I'm going to guess smaller frontal area and less drag for the Mooney because of the retracted wheels. Also, the Mooney just has a smaller cabin. But the Mooney pilot can acidly apply that old citation joke about Cirrus is taking bird strikes from the rear. It's totally unfair. But hey, you pay 700 large for an airplane, you might as well flog your bragging rights. One more comment on this graph before I move on. The acclaim totally leaves everything else for dead in the low flight levels. It's fully 30 knots faster than the Cirrus. Now on to range and endurance. Well, you don't have to be a math major to know that if an airplane is going faster, it's carrying more fuel and burning less of it, it's going to have more range, and the ovation does. Here's the graph. These are at 65% power, rich of peak weaning. They assume 8,000 feet and 45 minutes of reserve. With full tanks, the Cirrus can fly about 872 miles in still air, the Mooney about 1,150 miles. Over the same 872 mile max range trip, let's say Miami to Baltimore, the Mooney gets there 18 minutes sooner and burns 12 gallons less. But the Cirrus can do the trip with four people, the Mooney can't. On the other hand, the Mooney can fly from Miami to Boston nonstop. The Cirrus can't do that without a little help from the wind. And these are still air numbers in case you haven't figured that out. And in case you're interested, here's how it works out in nautical miles per gallon. The SR-22 gets 10.8 miles per gallon, the Mooney 12.9. Both of these airplanes can be run lean of peak, extending the endurance at the expense of a little bit of speed. And this is why that's true. This is the Continental IO550, which is hands down the most efficient gasoline piston engine in aviation today. That's because it has well-tuned top-down induction, a good exhaust system, and fuel injection. Both the Ovation and Cirrus models use a version of it. And not to go all stem on you or anything, but how about a little math? Engine efficiency is measured in brake-specific fuel consumption. You just divide the fuel consumption in pounds per hour by horsepower and you get a number like this. For the IO550, that's a BFC of 0.4 pounds per horsepower hour. As aircraft engines go, that's pretty efficient. And the IO50 can actually do better than that. Most Lycomings run in the mid.4s, while the aerodiesels from Continental and Austro are in the high to mid 3s. So the IO550 is how Mooney gets almost 13 nautical miles per gallon, an efficient engine in an efficient airframe. This airplane, uh, as most new production now coming out of most of the manufacturers, has a new Garmin G1000 NXI. It's got a faster processor. It's got uh, improved displays. 
It's got some uh, other features in it, and uh, Lee, you told me earlier, you've been pretty impressed with it. I really have. If 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 you're a G1000 guy, you know, in an 04 to 2015, 16 point, it, it's you wonder if it's worth the money and worth the change to the NXI, and I 100% believe it is. It's faster map rendering. Faster map panning, zoom in, zoom out. Your weather loads so much faster. Um, it's basically going from like Windows 98 to, to Windows 10 or something like that. Uh, you don't have the choice of the old G1000, right? It's only the NXI. That's correct. The NXI is the standard. Did did that bump up the price some? Oh uh, no. It, it may be not 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 a pretty negligible in the price of the airplane. Finally, a few observation on what it's like to fly the Ovation Ultra. Well, it flies just like a Mooney or maybe any other Mooney I've ever flown, and that's more than a few. As I mentioned, this is a highly automated airplane, so training up on it concentrates on learning the G1000 NXI and probably instrument currency. The M20 series doesn't really have any bad habits except for one. If you land it too fast in a flat attitude, those rubber donuts and the landing gear will, will return all that excess energy into a crazy crow hop or wheelbarrow. But if you keep the speed right, and for me that's an over the fence at about 75 knots indicated, it will reward you with a satisfying greaser with minimal float. The airplane doesn't like to shed speed quickly, so these precise flight speed brakes help in slowing down while going down. I'm so used to planning the descent in Moody's that frankly I forgot to use them but they're a good thing to have. While I'm saying, I'm sure you'll want to know the price of the Ovation Ultra. The base is $689,000 and typically equipped it's about $730,000. Yeah, I know, it's a pile of bucks, but that's the reality of modern new airplanes. You can leave the usual protest of outrage in the comment field. You can also find more details on the Ovation Ultra on Mooney's website, mooney.com, you can find a full text report on the Ovation Ultra in the February 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching.